change over time and classification. Darwin's theory of evolution. In 1859, a man by the name of Charles Darwin published a book named The Origin of Species. Before he published this book, two ideas about life on Earth prevailed. One was that species are fixed or permanent. In other words, they did not change. The other idea was that Earth itself is less than 10,000 years old and also relatively unchanging. But once people started becoming aware of the incredible diversity of organisms, both past and present, ideas were challenged and people began to study what we call evolution. In the biggest sense of the word, evolution is all of the changes that has transformed life over an immense length of time. It is the biological history of life on Earth. In December of 1831, Her Majesty's ship the Beagle set sail on a voyage around the world. The main mission of the voyage was to chart poorly known stretches of the South American coastline for the British Navy. However, accompanying the captain was a 22-year-old college graduate by the name of Charles Darwin. Now, Darwin's main interest was to study the geology, plants, and animals that they encountered along their voyage. This particular tour would greatly affect Darwin's thinking and eventually the thinking of many others. Now, the Beagle made many stops along the coast of South America. From there, the ship traveled to the Galapagos Islands and Darwin observed living things as he traveled. He thought about the relationships among those organisms that he saw. One of his important observations included the diversity of living things, the remains of ancient organisms, and the characteristics of organisms on the Galapagos Islands. Darwin concluded that the world included a tremendous diversity of living things in a wide range of habitats. Animals have different characteristics, and those especially in the Galapagos Islands, where they occupy different habitats in the same area, were a particular um, idea for him to study. Finding fossils or preserved remains or markings left by organisms that lived in the past also gave great clues to past and modern species. A person who helped set the stage for Darwin was a man by the name of Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, who in the 1800s proposed that life evolves or changes. He explained evolution is a process of adaptation. Today, biologists consider an adaptation to be an inherited characteristic that improves an organism's ability to survive and reproduce in a particular environment. An example of evolutionary adaptation is the long neck of a giraffe, so they can reach the leaves of the tall tree. Unfortunately, Lamarck was unable to give a correct explanation of how adaptations evolve. For example, um, he proposed giraffes by using or not using certain body parts, then this will help them develop certain characteristics. So he thought if there were short trees, then the giraffe's neck would not need to grow so long. So there would be some giraffes with short necks and some giraffes with long necks. So while Lamarck was incorrect in his theory, it did help Darwin develop his own scientific theory of evolution, and he was able to find evidence when he reached the Galapagos Islands. Darwin found many similarities between Galapagos organisms and those in South America. He noticed that while they were the same animal, there were important differences between the organisms on the islands and those on the mainland. Iguanas, for example, on the islands had large claws that allowed them to grip slippery rocks, whereas the iguanas on the mainland had smaller cloud claws, which allowed mainland iguanas to climb trees and eat leaves. As Darwin traveled from one Galapagos island to the next, he noticed many differences among the organisms. For example, the tortoises on one island had dome-shaped shells. Those on another island had saddle-shaped shells. And like the tortoises, the finches on the Galapagos Islands were noticeably different from one island to the next. The most obvious difference were their varied sizes and shapes of their beaks, as seen in this figure. An examination of the different finches showed that each species was well suited to the life that they lead. Finches that eat insects had narrow, needle-like beaks, where finches that ate seeds had strong, wide beaks. Beak shape is an example of an adaptation, the trait that helps organisms survive and reproduce. After Darwin returned from his voyage, he continued to think about what he had seen during his time on the Beagle, and he spent the next 20 years discussing with other scientists in order to gather more information, which concluded into his scientific theory of evolution. Darwin reasoned that plants or animals that arrived on the Galapagos Islands faced conditions that were different from those on the mainland. 
From there, Darwin hypothesized that those species gradually changed over many generations and became better adapted to the new conditions. In 1858, Darwin worked with a British biologist by the name of Alfred Russell Wallace to discuss how evolution occurs in nature. Darwin went ahead to write a book entitled The Origin of Species, where he proposed evolution occurs by means of natural selection. Natural selection is the process by which individuals that are better adapted to their environment are more likely to survive and reproduce than other members of the same species. Darwin would go on to write and identify factors that affect the process of natural selection over production, competition, and variations. Darwin knew that most species produce far more offspring than can possibly survive. In many species, for example insects, so many offspring are produced that there are not enough resources like food, water, and living space for all of them. If all thousands of eggs of a female insect hatched, the earth would be overrun by insects. Since food and other resources are limited, the members of the species might compete with each other to survive. Competition does not always involve direct physical fights between members of a species. Instead, competition is usually indirect. Going back to our example of the thousands of insect eggs that are laid, only few of these insects will survive because many insects that hatch will not find enough food to survive to eat. There are also going to be predators that live off the insect eggs for their own survival, and finding a cluster of eggs would be a meal for a predator. Darwin also knew that individual members of a species exhibit slight differences or variations. A variation is a slight difference of inherited trait of an individual member of a species. Variations arise naturally in a population, and you might recall from our previous chapters that variations are caused by random mutations or changes in genes. Mutations can lead to changes in phenotype or observable traits and characteristics of an organism. If a mutation or variation lead to better survival, then this phenotype will most likely be passed on to future, future generations. It is important to note that without variation, all members of a species would have the same traits and natural selection would not occur because everybody would have an equal chance of surviving and reproducing. Darwin was unable to explain what caused variations or how they were passed on, but we now know that it's the mutations and the shuffling of alleles during meiosis that cause these variations. Okay, it's time to show what you know.